Hey guys, welcome back. We reached 10,000 subscribers. I'm so excited and I want to thank all of you. Couldn't have done this without you. Um, thank you to everybody who's been here for the past nearly eight years. I'll tell you a short story here about, uh, about the beginning back then. Probably the first thing that most of you saw was the Let's make an MMO in UE4 tutorial series. And the reason that that started is that a group of developers that was, there's been multiple groups that have been working on bringing Paragon back. And one of those groups had contracted me to do some work for them. And I started working on it, you know, without getting any upfront money. And it ended up that uh, they didn't come through uh, with the payment and I was kind of angry. And so I said, hey, why don't I take all that work that I've done and start doing a tutorial series, you know, with all that work. And um, originally, I think the work was using, oh, I can't remember the Paragon champion. It was the guy, it was like the blue guy with the big gun. I ended up switching it because I kind of wanted more of a fantasy feel. And so that's why we ended up with Seraph instead. Um, most of the Paragon characters work very similar. And so it wasn't too hard to swap out the animation. That's kind of why you see that video one is setting up all of that animation and movement because that was a lot of the work um, that I was doing for that group. And so that's kind of kind of how that got started. And then it was really fun and everybody really enjoyed it. And uh, so I just kept continuing. And I think by the end, we ended up with, I don't know, close to 50 videos. And it was really great. Uh, and now hopefully we'll be able to get back into the Hub World MMO uh, videos at some point because I, I really enjoy doing that sort of thing. But uh, thank you all for 10,000 subscribers. A lot of people have asked uh, what it's like to work for a game studio. So for about the past year, I've been working for a game studio and uh, just tell you a little bit about that, um, what it's like. Um, everyone's really talented. That's like one of the big things that just jumped out right away. Like, you know, when you're working as an indie dev and you got a few friends and stuff, you know, it, it's hard because at times you're like, oh, I need an animation to do this, or I need an effect to do this. And, um, you know, you try to find something, you put something together, you don't always have everybody on the team. But when you're working for a game studio, like you're surrounded by these super talented people. And you're like, oh, I need an animation. And like, you know, two hours later, they've got an awesome looking animation or, oh, I need an effect to fit this new ability. And bam, you've got like this amazing effect. So it is, it is really cool. That's one of the things I've really enjoyed. Um, is being surrounded by all those talented people. Um, another thing that we will get to more in uh, future Hub World MMO video updates is this next one, requirements change often, right? And so you got a lot of different people with input and you have different, you know, designers and all these different things. And so you have to focus on building flexible, loosely coupled systems, which is not easy to do in Unreal Engine, but I'm gonna show you some ways that you can do that that will help you with your project as well. Because even though you may not have a lot of different voices with input that seem like, oh, they're gonna change the requirements. What I think you'll find is that, especially if you're new to game development, is that you'll be, you'll be trying things and then realize it doesn't work. Try something else, realize it doesn't work. And each time, if you have to keep rebuilding systems, it just takes a lot of work. And if you can instead build these more flexible, loosely coupled systems, you can often um, get more out of those. And, and if you need to make changes, you can a lot of times just do it just with configuration, or, or at least when you change one thing, it doesn't break everything else. So I'm going to show you some ways that you can do that in a future video, because that's, that's definitely one of the things that you have to do a lot of when you work at a big game studio. And finally, um, it's a lot of fun. So I been doing, um, you know, web development for 20 plus years and just switched last year to doing game development. And I was, you know, concerned that it was a big change, but it, it has been a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. There've been multiple people in the, in the ODBS2 discord, you know, who have started out with not a lot of game development knowledge and now they're working at studios too so it's definitely something you can do it takes a lot of work um, but i highly recommend it it is a lot of fun okay what's next for odbs2 so as you know for about the past year it's really just been um keeping it up to date i think we updated to ue 5.3 and ue 5.4 
in the past year. Uh, not a lot else going on with that. But um, we did recently switch our default database technology to PostgreSQL and be on the lookout for updated tutorials on the ODBS2 setup process and videos on managing our PostgreSQL database. Uh, what's next? So in the short term, um, as I get some time, I want to finish making the character data structures more generic, um, which is going to primarily mean removing almost all the fields from the characters table and using custom character data. And then uh, work on splitting out those separate databases for proper microservices. We're still using a monolithic um, ODBS one database, and I really want to get those split out. Um, probably the default will be that PostgreSQL handles all of those, but we, we may mix in some other two. I've been doing a lot of work with MongoDB. We'll, it might come into play um, for something like the custom character data uh, might be might be a good fit. We'll, we'll see. I don't know if it'll be the default or if it'll be an optional one you can swap in. And um, basically just continue adding new features to support the Hub World MMO example project. Um, that's I think that's just the best way to go here is to use the Hub World MMO example project to drive the new development in ODBS2 until we end up with, um, you know, a, a completed game demo. As far as the Hub World MMO example project, it exists to provide an example of how to build an MMO style game with Unreal Engine 5 and ODBS2. And um, my goals for the Hub World MMO example project is that I want to use Iris and other network optimization and other optimization beyond just networks to hit new max player per server records for this style of game. That's a big, a big goal of mine is to, is to, um, Try to try to see what can we really get, right? You know, people throw around the number 100 because Fortnite uses it. I think that's actually a really hard number to reach, but but I think it can be um, exceeded if we do things a certain way. And so uh, one of the things that I want to do and have been working on a bit is setting up um, an AWS Terraform script that I can basically spin up a ton of game clients and get some test data from that because we tried to do testing with users and it's just too hard to get a ton of people at the same time to be able to test and i think if we can do it with an automated script it's going to be a whole lot easier to test something make some changes test it again and see the difference and i think that's going to be the key i also want to lower server hosting costs with linux process forking um, i have been learning more about linux uh, with some of the stuff i've done with my new job and I really want to get back into that. I had some people looking into it. We had some initial setbacks, um, but I, I want to look into that again because I really think that for the style of games that we're working with and specifically the way we're handling zones, I think that Linux process forking um, could significantly reduce server hosting costs. Um, and then the main goal is really just to build an end-to-end -end playable game demo um, that we can try out, we can, you know, use as a show off for ODBS2 and this whole process and um, and just have a lot of a lot of fun uh, with that. And so that's that's the end goal. It's going to take a while to get there. You know, there's a lot of stuff to do and um, I have limited time, um, but I'm hoping to be able to get back into doing that at a somewhat more regular schedule. If you have any questions, um, please join our Discord. Um, the link will be down below in the video description. And I uh, just want to, again, thank you all for 10,000 subscribers. It has been an amazing journey. I have had so much fun and been so blessed and uh, just really thankful for all of you. Okay, have a good one. See ya.